AMD Developer Inside Track is here with Juan Flores from the SimNow team. Juan, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Juan Flores. Uh, I'm a member of technical staff at Advanced Micro Devices. I've been here for about nine years. Uh, the greater, uh, the good bulk of that nine years has been spent doing SimNow development and support. Excellent. So you're well qualified to tell us. What exactly is SimNow? Well, in a nutshell, uh, SimNow is a fast and configurable uh, instruction level system simulator. And with SimNow, users can connect together arbitrarily complex software models to form a full PC platform emulation environment. Now, breaking that down a little bit more, um, SimNow, one, one of the key goals of SimNow is that to give the users the ability to run unmodified guest software. And by guest software, I mean the software that's running inside of the simulator. So from the platform BIOS to the video BIOS to expansion ROMs to the full operating system, all of the code that runs in the guest in SimNow is completely unmodified. And that's actually one of the key things that differentiates itself from other modeling software or virtual machine software, which is a completely different category of software altogether, but might be something that some users in the community might compare to SimNow. Um, but it's something that distinct, distinguishes uh, itself from other similar software classes out there. So who would benefit from using SimNow? Well, to put it broadly, really anybody that's interested in functional system level simulation would be a customer of SimNow. To get into more specifics, software developers and system analysis are probably two of our major um, customer bases that we have currently. Um, Software developers, SimNow can be an extremely powerful tool because it can allow you to do pre-silicon uh, debugging development of your software before silicon is actually available, or even in post-silicon stages where silicon is either scarce, costly, or um, not healthy in some situations. Uh, the software teams can continue to go about doing their development and debug even in, in those hardware in, in those situations where hardware is not uh, uh, very very available at the time. Um, just to mention a particular case study and some, some one of the usages that we've had a lot for our public version is for um, compiler development. The compiler teams out there when, when AMD is, is working on uh, has published or has worked with other uh, partners to do uh, a new instruction set and is implementing that into its next generation of architecture. Typically, we make those instructions available in the public release of SimNow uh, prior to uh, years before um, uh, uh, having silicon available uh, publicly. And so that allows our uh, compiler teams or people doing instruction set analysis to go to create their tools for compiler development or for instruction analysis before the hardware is actually available. And we've done that for um, for our virtualization instructions uh, many years ago when, when AMD was just coming out with its virtualization technology. Uh, SimNow was one of the, um, was one of the um, um, founding blocks for getting the software community up to speed with, with the new instructions. And also for, for some of the newer um, uh, instruction sets that are becoming available in, in some of our upcoming uh, generation parts, um, we already have support for those instruction sets in our simulator currently. So can you give us an example of an instruction that's available through SimNow that isn't available on silicon today? Sure, absolutely. Uh, good question. So um, our current release of SimNow, uh, SimNow version 4.5.2, which is already available on developer.amd.com, uh, supports uh, AVX, which is the Advanced Vector Extensions instruction set, as well as its follow-on, XOP. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to be having a uh, a 4.6.1 release, which is going to be released to the public, uh, to the public site within the next few days, probably by the time this airs, and that will, in addition to the two instruction sets I just mentioned, will also have uh, the LWP instruction set, which is a lightweight profile. Okay, yeah, I can imagine device drivers, uh, developers being that, particularly interested. Definitely one of the classes of software developers. Um, the only thing, the only thing that will require is that 
is that we have a model for the device that you're developing the oh, driver for. Okay. And that's and that's typically uh, not a problem because most people that are doing driver development have already developed a model for some now, and so they'll have their uh, they'll have their simulation environment ready to go and uh, ready to develop their driver with. Okay. So I've heard that from the developer community that it, it can be difficult to install and get up and running. Can you walk us through that scenario? Sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah, uh, SimNow does have some very strict hardware uh, requirements for the host system that you're running SimNow on. Um, the first thing that you'll need is an AMD64 system. And, um, AM, an AMD64 system is basically just any system that has uh, an Opteron, an F164, Phenom, Turion, any any 64-bit uh, capable AMD processor as its as its core. Uh, secondly, the user will need a 64-bit OS. Now, um, for some internal reasons, with, which you know I'm, I'm not going to get into right now, there's only one 64-bit version of SimNow, and there's no 32-bit version available. So the 64-bit OS uh, procurement is probably going to be the biggest pain point in terms of uh, getting SimNow up and running for some users. Um, in addition to that, SimNow does have some hefty memory requirements. Um, we recommend at least four gigabytes of physical memory on your system in order to run SimNow, and that might vary depending on what you're actually trying to simulate. Uh, the more physical memory you try to simulate your guests, the more physical memory your host is going to require. So, in terms of host system requirements, it really varies depending on what you're trying to do. Most of the platforms that ship with SimNow um, uh, for you. Four gigabytes of main memory should suffice. Now, once you have a system that's capable of running SimNow, um, the SimNow installation itself is actually um, very, very, uh, very simple. Um, there's just a self-extracting executable for Windows and a tar gzip file for Linux. Um, both of those are pretty easy to install. And then once you have SimNow installed on your system, um, it's a matter of just opening one of the reference platforms that SimNow actually ships with. And the, the public version of SimNow actually has a number, uh, a good handful of reference platforms that AMD has developed over the years that the user can immediately open up. And these pu reference platforms are in the SimNow world are called BSDs, which is just uh, an acronym for virtual platforms. Um, and these B once you open these BSDs, and you start to explore SimNow and look at what's called the device viewer in SimNow, you'll see, um, you'll see a canvas of components that are very analogous to what you would see on a motherboard. You have your processor cores, you have your chip sense, your north bridge, your south bridge, your I.O. and your peripherals. All these things will probably be very familiar to uh, someone that's actually looked at or studied a motherboard before. And so once you have this platform open, you're basically ready to start simulating. And one, clicking on the go button in the simulator will start, start getting SimNow's engines cranking. And within a matter of minutes, depending on what type of platform you're trying to simulate, you should have your BIOS fully posted. Or if you're booting an OS, probably somewhere in the order of 20 to 30 minutes to boot a full OS. Um, if you're doing something more complex, like doing a complete operating system install, um, you're probably looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five hours to do a full operating system install. But once, you, once you've actually done that lengthy installation process, booting the, the OS up again uh, will only be a matter of you know a minutes, somewhere on the order of 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so I have a few side questions, but so if you have the 64-bit OS, then you're running SimNow, can you still install a 32-bit operating system in that simulation? Absolutely, because absolutely. The, okay. uh, I mean, the SimNow emulates emulates the hardware. And right. so 64-bit OS is like um, Windows and Linux have a compatibility, compatibility layer uh, which uses pieces of our architecture to, to run. And so anything that you can, so on a real system, you can run a 32-bit OS, uh, excuse me, a 32-bit application inside a 64-bit OS right. because the OS and the architecture provide that compatibility. And the exact same thing is, it's the exact same thing for SimNow. Okay. SimNow is basically uh, a new, it can be thought of as just a, a physical system living inside your physical system, I guess. And so the same things that you can run on a real system, you can run in SimNow. Okay, that makes sense. Um, 
What other kind of tips and tricks do you have for developers wanting to use them now? The, the main uh, suggestions I would have for users out there is to just take the time to explore SimNow. Um, SimNow itself is a very complex but powerful tool. It can be used for a lot of, a lot of different scenarios. Um, there is a steep learning curve associated with SimNow. So my, my best suggestion that I can give to users is to actually take the time to, to get to know the tool and get to know its cans and its cans. Um, what it's capable of doing, what it was designed to do, um, and conversely, what, it was, what it's good at doing. And on, at the same time, uh, take the time to think about the things that it's not designed to do. It's, SimNow is not a good environment for uh, doing timing sensitive code or, or code that would be sensitive to electricals or, or um, things related to the physical layer of a, of a PC platform. Mm -hmm. Um, but in terms of functional software behavior, it's an excellent and powerful platform that can be used um, by, by software developers or system analysis. Great. So, um, say you're up and running on SimNow, what sort of uh, support options do we provide? Sure. Well, uh, the, the first and foremost thing that I'll suggest is for, for users to take a look at the user's manual. And I know that's something that software developers always say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, the, the user's manual goes, has, has a lot of the frequently asked questions that we get from users out there. And it also has some steps for getting up and running quickly with SimNow. Um, if, you can't find your, if you can't find your answers there, there's always the, um, uh, our knowledge base that we have on developer.amd.com. In addition, there's our support email, simnow.support at amd.com. And uh, we will certainly uh, be responsive to that, to, to those emails. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Juan, for giving me the rundown on SimNow. And hopefully our uh, developer community finds this video helpful and they can get started running their own simulation of uh, hardware that they can't buy right now. So that's a pretty exciting um, opportunity for them. And it's a freely downloadable tool yes. um, as long as they accept the license agreement. That's correct. Correct. Um, so, yeah. Come to developer.amd.com and check it out. Sounds Thanks, Juan. Thank you. Thank you for having me.